darling. I hope this letter finds you in good spirits. Our distance never seems as such an empty void as it does when the sun settles into night. I find comfort knowing that my return is drawing nearer by the day, dearest. My spirits are tired when I think of how far you are from me. But they lift when I think of how soon you will return, my, my love. love. The trial today was long. The spectators wept as I laid bare the inhumane details. Your testimony in this trial may be your highest calling. As doctors, we have witnessed more than most the atrocities that men can perpetrate against women, against girls. I am without a doubt ready to complete my charge. She was just a child. Those almond shaped eyes were pools of sadness and despair. They're etched into the fabric of my memory. May we hold firm in our belief in the long race that we have run that women will achieve full personhood, that girls' bodies will belong to none but themselves, that their intellect and insight will be revered. Hold fast. The hope that one day little girls will be able to stand and have a voice. I know, I know the, burden the burden rests, rests on, on my our shoulders, shoulders to, be their voice to be their voice until that time comes. Until that time comes burden that never seems as heavy as it does right now. Any word from the women's club? Any moment I've had away from our patients has been spent at the Louisville Equal Rights Association. I feel Susan smiling down on us. Each meeting is more populated and robust than the last. We are dawning on an era that will allow us to make a bigger difference for the women of this fine country. We will join hand in We're hand, hand, hand in from hand. every walk of life, color of skin and religion. Women from join all walks together. of life and yet... And vote. We're all, We're all the, same. the same. I do hope to be more informed of anything I can assist you or the others while I'm away. Anna, as the light flickers from the flame of the hearth, so do my dreams for the future. I know some may seem like schoolgirl fantasy, but darling, darling look think toward, toward tomorrow. tomorrow. How would it be to see the vote pass? <laughs> How many lives will change? This will shape our country in ways we can't even imagine yet. The children, Anna, the 14 year old who feels battered and broken, this gives her hope. We can dream, move from the shadows and bathe in the sun. Endless, endless possibility. possibility. The hour draws late. I must retire to my bed. My heart aches for your smile, my soul for your comfort. I shall write, shall write again, again soon. soon. Love eternal. Keep safe, my beloved. Jules. And I fight for the girls of the future because I am a girl of the future. Women and girls deserve to be strong and to earn their own money and to be happy. 100 years from now, the world will be pink, spiky leaves.
and women will get to decide how they want their life to be, and that's how it will be. I can't give up on fighting for my right because I am my future. La la la. Every day, I wake up. I have two cups of coffee, a boiled egg, and a bowl of oatmeal. I read the papers, the magazines, letters, and correspondence in the post. I get dressed, and I head to work. Every day, I work to improve the life of the Negro. In the 50 years since the Emancipation Proclamation, my people have made leaps and bounds. In the journey of becoming fully recognized citizens of this country, we are a tribute to the blood, sweat, and tears of our fathers. They could never imagine the schools, the homes that we would have today, the clothes we wear, and the jobs that we work. We are the fruit of seeds sown in the cotton. Sugar and tobacco fields of this nation. In 100 years, women will have gained the franchise. Black women will gain the vote, and we will not only swarm those ballot boxes, but we will be on the ballot. Women will have the right to help shape this country. In its true democracy, the world will be powerful. The world will know the power of woman, not just in our homes, but in schools, in churches, businesses, and offices. Women entrepreneurs will mind their own futures and not be at the mercy of their fathers and brothers. I'm sure my school will still be standing, doing the work of educating Black women and young girls. I am not naive, however. I know that people will try to continue to suppress and disrespect us. Those in power will try to silence our voices. We must be ever vigilant. We must march on until victory is won. I am fighting for the girls of the future because they deserve to have the same advantages that men have. We shouldn't need to fear being sexualized when we're going out in public. A hundred years from now, I hope that the world won't prefer men for certain jobs anymore. I can't give up the fight for my rights because the beautiful women of the future deserve to live happy and equal lives. Today, I read an editorial post the idea of women's suffrage by Judge Fox. In it, he argued that all sorts of dire consequences are inescapable should women ever be granted the franchise. If we are to allow these words to affect us, it is easy to get discouraged by such arguments and the frequency with which they are made. It is easy to allow. Unwomanly feelings to get the best of us. To steady my emotions and return myself to clarity on the subject, I imagine women, 100 years from now, going to vote. They are unhindered in their voting. Actually, they gather together with their daughters en masse to cast their ballots. They know how hard we fought. For the right, they know their voice matters. They might even be voting for other women, women on the ballot, women voting for other women. Imagine that. And surely, if we are able to organize and gather together to help the plight of women by changing long-standing property rights laws, we should be fit to hold office. I were to run for office, which office would I want to hold? City councilor, state legislator, governor, president. <laughs> well, 
surely in a hundred years, enough progress would have been made for women to run for and hold the office of president of the United States. Madam President. Oh, <laughs> imagine it. I wonder what Judge Fox would have to say about that. I am fighting for the girls of the future because they deserve to live in a world where men and women are equal. Women deserve to walk down the street and not have to fear for their lives. A hundred years from now, I hope that the world will have more women in power. That women will have equality. The women before us did not fight for us to just give up and quit. There needs to be a change and it starts with us. Today, one of my students came to me weary of the indignities we colored women are forced to endure. Sadden me to see the pain and exhaustion in her face. She's so young to be so disheartened. So I shared with her something that I tell very few in hopes that it would give her hope. I told her the story of a little girl born into slavery who once freed was given the opportunity to attend school Taking note of her intellect, despite her humble beginnings, the school connected her with generous donors who would support her education. That little girl is now a woman working and earning a living as a professional. And not only is she educated herself, she's educating others through her teaching and her writing and public speaking. She is working to make a better world for us all. And when she feels the stain of injustice, she remembers how far she has come and how faithful God has been to her. For just 35 years ago, she was born into slavery with no hope of freedom or paid work or education. And now she has all of those things. I finished my story there and I looked at this student, this bright, young, intuitive person. And I knew that she knew that I was talking about myself. And then Together we dreamed of what the lives of colored women would be like 35 or even 100 years from now. Imagine it. The strides that we'll have taken toward freedom 100 years from now. There will be colored women working in every profession, leading even. And one day we will cast our vote for candidates who look like us. <sighs> hmm. May God make it so. I still want to do things in life because I'm only 13, so I still want to travel and do other things and see what's there. And I want to get married, have kids, stuff like that, but. I want to focus on my school right now and get good grades and have a, a good job and have a career and go to college because I want to follow my mom's footsteps and be a teacher. I don't want the world to not change and I want people and especially girls or women to um, live a great life and not feel like they don't matter because they do. I'm fighting for girls of the future because um, I want to. I want the little girls to grow up and be confident, don't doubt other people, and have faith and believe in themselves and believe in others. Because I don't want them to grow up and feel down and being mistreated or getting bullied or stuff like that. I want them to be equal as men and men not be better than them, men to think they're better than them. Women deserve a nice man, but I, women don't need to rely on them because they need to 
depend for themselves and don't need to rely on a man to take care of them because they have to take care of themselves and look after them and look after kids if they have kids. Women deserve to be um, equal and for them to be treated right and men to treat them right. A hundred years from now, the world will be better. Hopefully, I don't want people to or girls to go through what we're going through now, like the coronavirus and the um, protesting and killing people, police officers. And stuff. Yeah, I think the world will be settled, but not over, because sometimes. The world can be challenging. Sometimes feel like you won't give up. Just keep going. And if you give up, you won't see what's beautiful or what's nice in life. Because you want to keep going and see what you can accomplish. Because if you believe it, you can achieve it. After time moves on, I know that women will second the ballot. The work and the determination to fight that I have seen will only grow until we conquer the closed minds of the men on the hill. It is the only answer. Women deserve the right to vote. We are a key component in a fair and better democracy. In a hundred years, black and white women will stand together, stronger and more powerful. The words of both will be heard. They will have the right to govern their own lives in politics and in business. And when they go to the polls to cast their votes, their votes will matter. The families will be stronger. They will open their homes, as I have done, as safe places to talk about changing the world. And they will make the world a better place for their children, their grandchildren, and so on. It is not enough to fight for what we want. We must also fight for the rights of others. And we must be open and loud about justice for all. Is this life right now? Because it's not fun. Women and young ladies have been hiding for too long. We have asked for our human rights and nothing has changed. It is time to stick a stand right here, right now. Women and young ladies have been oppressed people when we could be full of joy. So we will let the people know we are here to stay and not be pushed around. By protesting, we will raise our fist with joy and not with anger, because that is not the way to go. We will march in, in the streets until they give us what we have deserved and wanted for many, many years. Women and young ladies have, have to think better of ourselves uh, because we don't need the Prince Charming to run to when you can um, have yourself to depend on. And you, and when you're ready to stand up and be a leader with me, let me know because it is time and nothing will stop us if we stand up and show up with the heart, soul, and spirit. Why am I working to ensure that women will be granted the vote? Because, because we, we can, can and we, we should. should. It's not mysterious. How long did my forebearers labor unjustly with no choice in the matter? No longer. I pray that one glorious day, all the people of the world will come together like a great symphony, where the women are equal with the men, and together they create a joyous tune that can be heard from the highest of heavens.
Despite some determined belly aching, the country and the world have not ended and are in fact stronger with the addition of new bodies and minds and voices from an altogether different set of lived experiences. A day when we realize that we are all God's children and nothing makes one better than the other. Why, if a man of my color has gone from voiceless to voice and sweetened the national refrain with his new harmonies, should half our country's inhabitants still be expected to stand by in silence? Let us join Let in, us join in and, and be our own, own notes, notes to the chorus. I can imagine that sweet song and how melodic it would sound. A hundred years from now, voters and elected officials will be both male and female. They will be white and black, even Spanish or native or Asian. They may be rich or poor. The melody melody laid laid out by by the the founding founding fathers fathers will have grown. I have dreamt of that day for so long. Grown into a layered fullness of a rich symphony. One in which every individual's efforts are vital contributions to the beautiful whole. And that's why I can't give up the fight for human rights. This is not guaranteed for tomorrow without the progress of today. Why Why am I working working now now to ensure ensure women's women's vote? vote? I know that if I stop now, I'll never get to hear the sweetest song the world has yet to experience. At every step along the way, it is our generation's responsibility to set the tone and keep up the tempo. This victory was hard won and made meaningful change for many women and for our country. And almost immediately, States began making laws suppressing and denying the vote to black women, indigenous women, and women of color, essentially rendering this amendment applicable only to white women. The struggle for the franchise for every citizen continues to this very day. them as best we can and continuing the work that is left to be done even as we acknowledge that the work will be infinitely harder to complete now that alma bergman mary virginia cook parish dr julia ingram alice nugent dr anna lawrence georgia nugent nanny helen burroughs Susan Look Avery are no longer with us. Are no longer with us. Are no longer with with us.
standing in the present, we can see that so much has changed for the women of this nation in the last hundred years. Looking at the struggles of the past, we also see there is so much that has not changed. Inspired by the persistence and perseverance of our foremothers, we struggle on. Instructed by their shortcomings, we struggle on. Seeing the injustice of our current moment, we struggle on. Holding fast to a vision of a future where all who identify as women and girls are truly free, we struggle on.